Welcome to another exciting edition of Your Stealth Flight Within. Welcome, 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 welcome. Good to have you along. Good to good to be here again. And obscure as usual because we have a lot of fun with the special effects using Manicam and that we will continue to do. Uh, short and sweet tonight. A quick message this morning. This uh, stuff comes out of nowhere. And I start writing things down, and I still don't get it. But when we're taught to memorize things, memorization is also a tactic used in brainwashing. If you want somebody to believe something, you blast it over the speakers 24-7 while they're locked up in, say, solitary confinement for months at a time with nothing but the same words over and over. You're, they're going to memorize it all. They're going to sort of believe it all because it went on and on over and over and over again and locked into the memory but is memorization a programmed misuse of the human spirit it could be your spirit works both within you and without you it works inside of you for you it works outside of you and other places for others I broke it down to three little parts it won't take long tonight very important message somehow I don't know how but it will make some kind of sense to you sometimes it doesn't make any sense to me at all I'm closing the door sometimes it makes no sense to me at all but it might on the other hand mean something to you consciousness memory and the go-between Okay, our consciousness is the awareness of our being, our own awareness of ourselves, our awareness of who we are besides when we look in the mirror, when we function throughout the day, the, the person inside of us that we are, our consciousness, okay? And then memory. Memory is believed to be stored within the brain, which is part of our physical being, so our memory is more sort of a carnal, we'll say, uh, physical feature, okay? But there is a go-between, and we're going to call it recall. Recall. Depending on how we view our own human spirit, memory is often mistaken for spirit. I'll say it again, memory is often mistaken for spirit. Now, if you have memorized things, you might think that your ability to recall that information quickly is spirit, but it's not. That's your memory. However, when we focus on only our five physical senses, a mistake occurs. You see, so your spirit can become the go-between for consciousness and memory. Our mind believes that what we recall from memory through, say, even academically acquired knowledge gives the perspective that we're spiritual. This conceals your stealth light within. It conceals your light from your own consciousness, and this conceals your light from others, and sometimes others need your light more than you do. You're fully functioning in several dimensions at all times and you're not necessarily aware in this physical presence of what you might be doing in another dimensional presence in another realm. There are two spiritualities that we will be dealing with during the days that we walk upon this earth. Love and fear. One sees the earth and all therein in a very beautiful perspective while the other is so unsettled and so constant and blatantly distracting of our peace. So be aware of memorization. Be aware of people who will use their memorization to try to discredit you through things that they memorized as if they knew all the rules. When rules are memorized like that, they're not really that highly regarded. They lose their power. 
not in the mind of some who would impose it upon you, although they might not necessarily believe so. They would impose it on you to see things their way, whether they believe the rules they memorized or not. Now, our visualization trick for tonight, that was our message, by the way. Wasn't it short and sweet? A little visual, visualization message is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm going to... Did I whack? I whacked the camera. Did I whack the camera? Boy. Let me unwhack the camera real quick. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Are you ready for reality? There we go. Take everything out of cartoon mode. Well, greetings. How 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 you doing? How do you like the uh, the old Bat Cave these days? We have a few new features. We have uh, a few ancient friends hanging out with us. We have an old seashell, a crystal ball, lots of things, and a couple of what appear to be wonderful candles, of which we'll have our visualization exercises for tonight. You see, things aren't always the way they seem to look, and I can prove it. Because if I were to tell you that I could accidentally set myself on fire very easily with a candle, because heat rises and the flame will reach up to anything that is flammable. So what we need to do is find something flammable and see if the, the heat will rise enough. And maybe I'm not holding it just right. But, uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Now we got it. There we are. Now, ah. Now that the candle is lit fully, there's a lot of extra wax. Hold on, let me take care of this wax. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. <sighs> hmm. Pretty, pretty cool, if you ask me. Huh? All right. I wouldn't do that with anything but a white candle. So, do we have any questions in the chat room tonight? Uh, anything curious about the universe? I've, I'm very, very open to answers from somewhere. I don't know where they'll come from, but you might know. You'll recognize the source when you get the answer. A little bit of channeling here and there occurs and it occurs more when I write. It's 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 more prevalent when I write. Actually, I go ahead and write, and then it starts getting more prevalent when I proofread what I wrote. And then, as I proofread it, it turns into something totally different from how I started. It's nice to see you all in here at this time. Now, you've got these fingers and they allow you to put something in the chat room. Because I know about the private chat rooms people disappear in on these on these little boards that Ustream let us do. Going to the Stealth Light Within on Facebook. Remember the horse, the pony with the... It looked like, uh, looked like a rock and roll horse. Slash's horse. I like that. And then Veronica via April Crawford made a couple of appearances this week on the Stealth Light. Did you see... April Crawford's post. April Crawford is the human that channels the entity Veronica. And when you see Veronica on Stealth Light on Facebook, take a look at what she talks about. 
She is a very, very uh, deep trance channeler. Yeah, busted. I know. I got you. I, I, I caught you both in the private chat room, right? See, I, I don't see the private chat room, but the private chat room is there somewhere. And you know, I'm going to tell you something. You guys got it hot in here. You guys have it steaming in here. What the heck are you doing? <laughs> Good grief. How many miles apart are you? How do you do that? Watch for uh, the art and the thoughts of Jasmine Matilda Armstrong on Facebook. Very powerful part of our goddess connection. We started talking a little bit about something weird last week and then we stopped because it scares people. People don't want to talk about things that kind of alarm them. But... Uh, Transhumanism. Transhumanism. You know, well, we think of prosthetic devices, helpful prosthetic devices, but there's some of them out there talking about taking the human brain and freezing it. And there are people who've had their brains frozen, had their heads frozen. One of them, Ted Williams, which was a, a a Boston Red Sox player and one of the smartest men in the world ever so smart that they decided to freeze his head so in the future if they ever found a cure for death well they don't they're not close to the cure for death yet but they do have a cure for something because they are bio techniquing uh, brains and well for instance for instance a, a deaf person can have an implant placed in their ear to their brain that allows them to hear sound. That's fantastic. Now it gets scary when they start saying things like we're going to build a machine and put a human brain in it. But your thoughts on that are what I'm interested in. In fact, if you know anyone who has any thoughts. Well, that now that's another thing. Now we respond to the chat room when we're in uh, Ustream and if you're watching a uh, if you're watching a, a recording of this webcast, which you're probably not because I used a song at the beginning of it that uh, YouTube will probably not like us using, so this probably won't go into the archives. But uh, they've already got sort of prosthetic devices for all those worn out parts, Joe. You just have to know where the stores are located on the outskirts of town, and, you know. You just have to know where to shop. And then, of course, there's the timeline. The announcement of this show coming back to the airwaves uh, or the, uh, the cyber waves. We find things on, uh, on, on Facebook that artists create. They put this feeling or this thought into a form of art. And this one thought is so vast and fantastic and their art is so imaginative that a hundred people can look at the same piece of art and see a hundred wonderful things. It goes the other way too. There are people who are not going to like some of the art and they'll promote it saying, look what this rascal did. There's a picture going around Facebook right now where a young lady is pointing a gun at a child. And it's very compelling to put this on your timeline to expose that rotten person that's holding the gun to the baby's head in the picture because it's so outrageous in this day of age of gun phobia and phobia phobia and everything phobia that they want to go ahead and just try to expose this person so everyone will hate this person. And did it ever occur to anyone that when you post something to expose how bad it is, it's just as much promoting it as if it was a favorite thing you've ever seen. 
In fact, if you want to stop this kind of thing from getting out, forwarding it or sharing it is not going to make it go away. That could make it go viral. You could become one of the millions and millions of people who would fall for that trick just so that person could get a hundred million hits. You know what? If they get a lot of... You can hook yourself up and if you get a million hits on something, you're going to get some money. You know, you you hook up to some of the the advertisement mechanisms that are available on the internet, and you can. I mean, Google has a wonderful thing called AdSense, and if you're in Google AdSense and you have websites with your AdSense ads on those on those pages, you get paid for the click-throughs, and and you don't you know you don't touch them yourself. You leave them alone. Other people, plenty of people, come to your website. Plenty of people will click. And you'll get that money on a regular basis. In fact, I'm uh, I'm due for another uh, payment from Google. As a matter of fact, right now, as we speak, they're processing my payment. I thought if I paused for just a moment, I'd catch you guys again. You're starting to get a little slick. Well, thanks for uh, joining us tonight, and what we'll do is we're going to stop the recording of the program, and we're going to stay on for just a little bit more with a little music to give some folks some things to do and time to do it. And the excuse is, well, I was watching the show. That's all I was doing was just watching the show. Now, this might interrupt for a moment while I stop the recording and try to save it. Okay, so stand by. I'll be right back. I'm just going to save it and come right back in so if I disappear I might not disappear I might freeze frame or something who knows